Hello and welcome to Salford Now. I'm Olivia Davies. And I'm Erin Diskin. Coming up in the programme, we'll be looking at how Salford residents are tackling the problem of litter. The Salford Youth Club that's pulling in the tourists and a tasty festival with a difference. But first, with local elections already having taken place, the Green Party's latest talks have been based on climate change and how they wish to combat it. Olivia went along to find out more. Climate change is something we've heard a lot about recently. From school children protesting, to being told we only have 12 years to save our planet. And tonight is no different. Here, in Salford, Green Party members have come together to talk to us about how we can tackle climate change. Then I'd like to see all the buses have clean exhaust fumes, so they would be electric buses or using some kind of fuel that doesn't give off all these horrible, horrible fumes. But did you know that even if you didn't have clean buses, but if people drove in buses instead of in private cars, there's a huge reduction in the exhaust fumes from that, because you've got 30 or 40 people in each bus. So it's all these sorts of things to try and just, you know, practically reduce car use, increase bicycle use and walking, and get people out there enjoying life. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warned us back in October 2018 that global warming is likely to reach 1.5 degrees Celsius between 2030 and 2052 if it continues to increase at the current rate, which experts warn is dicing with our planet's livability. Uh, that's massive changes we need to get to essentially get to carbon neutral societies here in the global north in that time frame. Change, rapid change, is the normal human condition. And there's so many opportunities in that change to improve people's lives. Olivia Davies, reporting in Salford. Research from Keep Britain Tidy shows more than 2 million pieces of litter are dropped in the UK every day. Taxpayers pay over £1 billion a year to cover the cost of street cleaning. In Salford, there have been several groups set up to try and tackle the issue of littering. Olivia Mulally reports. Students from City Skills in Salford gathered in Peel Park as part of their community challenge to pick up litter and clean up the River Irwell. Uh, we want to clean the city uh, and clean the park. Well, we're trying to make sure that the, uh, the students are aware of the problem and we're trying to make sure that, um, that they work together as, as a team as part of their community challenge. To raise awareness, basically, on uh, a, a younger target audience um, making sure they're aware of how how our planet's changing quickly in terms of the use of plastics and people are a bit ignorant towards uh, rubbish and litter. Littering is a problem in Greater Manchester. A YouGov survey showed that more than one in four admitted to carefully littering. The government has tried to tackle this issue by doubling the number of officers who handed out a total of 12,560 fixed penalty notices between April 2018 to January 2019. But is this enough? Uh, well, I personally think there is a problem, and um, you know, I, I walk and drive around Salford because uh, I'm a Salford resident, and I feel it is getting um, worse, especially with fly tipping and um, you know the problem with with plastic as well. So uh, we just want to do our bit for the community. There is more awareness being made to reduce the litter in our community. Hopefully, it will make a difference. Olivia Mullally, Keys News. What, what seems to be the most unlikely tourist attraction in the North West, a small youth club in Salford has been attracting thousands of visitors each month for nearly 30 years. The venue is still used for local activities today, whilst remaining a big attraction for music fans around the world. Our reporter, Jodie Smith, went to find out more. Salford Lads Club, opened in 1903, still keeps up its founding aim of keeping kids off the street. The club involves local people in sports, arts and education. The club is basically to get the kids off the streets, try and keep them out of trouble. Um, we have five-a-side football, basketball, table tennis, pool, boxing. A lot of the kids today, they just tend to walk, you know, walk off the streets. That's why the club is a place for them to try and um, give them a little bit of inspiration. Engraved onto this wall just here, is the name of every single member that's been at Salford Lads Club. And according to their records, over one third of these are Irish migrants. The Industrial Revolution in the Northwest kick-started large-scale immigration, with many Irish migrants working in the local mills. You go into quite a lot of detail in the archives. I mean, it does not just tell you the, 
name of the boy who joined the club and the date of birth and his address. It also tells you where he went to church on a Sunday morning, which is something you wouldn't ask now. Most lads, when they got to the age of 18, had to go in, in the forces to national service. So it was on there, and on those that got killed, it tells you. The club was made famous after the band The Smiths took their album cover photo outside the club doors. Johnny Marr from the band said that many melodies from sad Irish songs he grew up with found their way into many Smiths hits. The club attracts tourists from across the world who come to look at the memorabilia and snap a photo outside. Jodie Smith, reporting for Keys News. There is a likely chance you've never heard of Ramsbottom in the North West, but on a busy weekend in April, hundreds of visitors descended on the town for its annual chocolate chocolate festival, a growing event that is slowly putting it on the map. Emily Stewart was there to find out more. On a normal day, the market town of Ramsbottom looks like your average quiet village. But every year, these streets fill with people in celebration of one thing. Chocolate. Traders from all over the country have been taking over Bridge Street to sell their sweet and savoury goods to hungry visitors for almost 12 years. As you can see, these streets are packed. The last census said that Ronswell's population was nearly 17,500, but last year these streets accommodated up to 30,000 people over the festival weekend. So what is it about chocolate or this town as a whole that draws people to such a traditional market? The, the town's always, for a long time now, has been listed as one of the top 10 places to live uh, and it's things like the chocolate festival that help that. The festival has now become a staple of Ramsbottom's calendar, but the event had much darker beginnings. When the recession hit, we decided we needed to create festivals for towns, one being uh, the chocolate festival. A lot of the influence came from here, the chocolate cafe, now one of the town's most recognisable eateries and sellers of locally made high quality chocolate. What would you say like the defining feature of the chocolate festival is like as a whole? Um, other than chocolate. <laughs> Spencer and his family have been running the cafe for the last few years, experiencing firsthand the rise in popularity. It's a big part of the festival, even yeah. though we're not one of the, the main organisers now, it's almost out, outgrown the cafe and it's uh, people in Ramsbottom that are running it. With this year being a huge success once again, it's likely this delectable festival won't be leaving anytime soon. Emily Stewart, Ramsbottom. And now, live in our studio, we have Ross and James with our the latest in football news. Well, what a week of football it has been. It began by a stunning strike by Man City captain Vincent Company to take them back to the top of the Premier League table going into the final weekend. Moving on to the European competitions, <laughs> both Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur produced a football miracle. It started at Anfield on Tuesday night. After a heavy 3-0 blow at the new Camp last week, it looked like it was at the end for them. But after an outstanding team performance, they defied the odds and progressed to the final, winning 4-0. Joining them in an all-English Champions League final, a Tottenham Hotspur, who produced an equally impressive comeback. Rising back from a 1-0 defeat in London, they travelled to Amsterdam with the odds stacked against them. To the delight of the Southern contingent, they managed to emerge triumphant with a 3-2 victory. For the first time in English football history, both European competitions will feature all English finals, with Arsenal and Chelsea defeating Valencia and Frankfurt to earn their respective places back to the presenters. Thanks, Ross and James. Now, as part of their 40-year anniversary, Odsall Community Arts Centre paid tribute to a recently found statue. The bronze Odsall Peacock stood outside Odsall High School but went missing in 1988. On the 24th of March, the community centre organised for the outline of the statue to be lit on Ardsall Park as a way of bringing the community together to remember an important part of their history. Olivia Muckadu reports. As the sun set over Ardsall Park, the floor lit up with magical colours. The outline of the Ardsall Peacock glowed with light as a tribute to the original brass statue. I think it's really imaginative to lay it out in the park in the way that it was presented. Um, the colours got more and more intense as the light as the sun fell um, and looked like little points of a stained glass window almost by the time I finished looking at it. The local community was invited to witness the powerful work from the window of a local resident's home in a nearby tower block. The peacock itself is really attractive and really pretty looking, yeah, because you're looking down on it from an angle but what makes it totally charming is looking at it from somebody's own flat. 
so it kind of makes it a very different experience because you do get quite a few odd um, opportunities to see odd art experiences but you very rarely get them from a domestic setting or from somebody in the house who's just let you in for the evening. The original Brass Peacock stood outside Oddsall High School for 27 years until it went missing in 1988 when the school closed. But seven years ago it was found outside Salford City College and since then local residents have been working hard to have it restored. One volunteer is particularly happy to give it back to the community as it has been stored underneath her desk for the past six years. The importance of the sculpture to the local community is that people say it's kind of the 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 the, the Oddsall spirit, the community spirit, is as strong as the Oddsall peacock. You know, it's made of solid bronze. It's a really you know substantial piece of work. So it's kind of symbolic of community uh, spirit really round here, which is lovely. The restored bronze peacock is planned to be placed in Oddsall Hall by the end of July, where it is hoped the community spirit will live on. And now we have Chris Theobald with the local weather in and around Salford Keys. Oh hi there, didn't see you there. It's not raining at the moment, but there's a 70% chance of it raining later, with highs of 12 degrees Celsius and as low as 6 degrees. Back to you, in the studio. Just a reminder to make sure you're following us over on, Twi on Twitter at Salford Now for all the latest local news and updates. That's all we've got time for today, but for now, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.